2035, a girl born today will turn 18. About 80% of jobs at that time still do not exist today. What is the future we are preparing this girl for? Is our educational system future-proof? Can we really educate our students on something we don't understand ourselves? Well, I think we can. Today, I'm convinced that the core of education is not what we teach to a student. The main question is how, which I once used as an excuse to my professor, but that didn't work, actually. Current educational system is a one-way stream of information. Students are thought to stay silent in class, raise their hand for a question, and don't talk to each other during tests. Even more so, every student must learn by the same curriculum, by the same pace, and the same disciplines, despite of being all different. But don't take me wrong. I love school, I loved going there, and I love education. I learned so much, and we need it. However, I did not enjoy the way I was studying. But all of us have some great memories to share, don't we? When I think of my high school year, I remember one great teacher I had who taught me psychology. Together with him, we would travel. We went to Slovakia, UK, and Spain. During one of our trips to Slovakia, we participated in a youth exchange project. There, I got to meet a lot of people that were very different. But despite our differences, we did connect. Some of the people came from poor countries. Some of them were from rich countries. There was one person who traveled around Europe hitchhiking all by himself. Isn't that great? While well, we were the youngest group. But despite our differences, we've learned a lot. Every day we would share ideas. We would discuss ideas and debate ideas. And then I just thought to myself, why can't I have this in my education, in my high school? And this thought struck me. That was a true education should be. A true education should be a two-way stream of ideas shared in a dialogue. We base everything on human contact in our society. Interestingly enough, we don't do this a lot in our education. Mostly we just listen to our professor and consume. And this is why we have to question our education and question what it is that we do. About two years ago, on 26th of October, so five days from now, we're celebrating our two years birthday. And this thought had stayed with me for a while, and until when I was discussing with my soon-to-be co-founder, Theodore, back in Rotterdam, in Erasmus University. We were sitting in a place called Café Boon. They have amazing sandwiches if you ever visit. And we were debating. We thought, what if we could create a community? Why don't we take action upon ourselves and create a community in which people can learn from each other? This is how Turing Society was started. Turing Society works with technology education. As a nonprofit, we run affordable courses, boot camps, and workshops for students to learn technology. But at the core of everything we do, we build communities. Through our work in this field, we have found that it is best to let our students do the learning themselves. And in order to achieve this, we base everything on three main concepts. Independent learning, peer-to-peer -peer learning, and a community. We found our first principle when we, as instructors, stopped giving out answers to our students. So let's say a uh, situation. A student comes up to us and then has a problem, and we just don't tell him the answer. We let them struggle a bit. We call it a 20-minute rule. It's fairly simple. If you're struggling, try to find an answer by yourself for at least 20 minutes. If you still have a problem, then go to a colleague of yours or a friend who could help you. Again, spending 20 minutes to find an answer. 
And that's using any resources you have. You can Google, read a book, or call your mom if she's coding. Whatever works for you. And this is how we interact our community. The results were remarkable. Students of Turing Society have a habit of solving the problems themselves. When they're working in a company, they don't rush to a colleague every five minutes and ultimately wasting their time. They really try to figure it out by themselves. And more importantly, this helps us to connect our community. That's when we come to our second principle, peer-to-peer -peer learning. Having a community together, it's very important they do work together. And throughout our work, we found that students would come to working groups and try and code together, solve assignments, even without our interference. I remember one time walking into a local cafe and seeing a group of people with laptops trying to do something. I was crazy, but super cool, right? I walked up to them and I was very happy to find out they were from Turing Society. And this is how we engage our community to work together. So this is a very important part when our community comes together to work and learn. As an example, in one course, we took it a step further. We said, let's remove the instructor completely. There was no one to teach our students. It was a bit puzzling to them at first, but then we explained it. You're going to have a teaching assistant who's going to give you assignments and courses and guide you. Very importantly, these teaching assistants were coming from our community as well. So they were part of the community, a recent graduate of our courses. And our students would still learn a lot. They learned a lot together because they shared ideas. We found that there's enough resources online. Most of the time they Googled, but hey, it's the same result if the instructor is telling them the theory. So they learn to find information. They learn how to use it and properly research it. And it is only important and possible because of the strong community that we have formed, which is our third and the most important concept. Community is at the core of everything we do. As an example, in our courses, we have never ever had a gender gap. About 45% of students in our courses are women, while the market standard is 17%. We believe the reason is because of our strong community. We have never ran a separate promotion for women to get into coding. We just found out we don't have a gender gap, which was great. And we explain it by having a strong community. People in Turing Society know each other very well. Very often, they do work together after their courses. They start side projects, startups, build companies. And that's why the way we keep our community engaged and keep them working together. So the three main principles, fairly simple, right? Independent studying, peer-to-peer -peer learning, and a community. And you might, might ask, how do these three come together, really? Well, remember me talking about a future-proof education. This is our perspective on what education should be. An education in which a student does not learn the hard skills, but has the soft skills to learn them. If our graduate graduates not knowing how to create a latest technology app, we don't really mind. Everything we care about is that the student knows where to start a project and is completely self-capable of learning all the skills he or she needs to complete the project, which is our main goal, which is what we perceive as the future-proof education. That's our way of questioning it and questioning the expected. But you might ask, where did we get this inspiration from? And you won't believe it. It's because of Duolingo. Does someone use Duolingo here in the crowd? It's an online platform that teaches you a language, right? When someone asked Bill Gates what does he like to do during his free time, Bill Gates said, I like to use Duolingo to learn French and Chinese. 
So the world's richest man alive with net worth close to $90 billion does not hire a teacher or go to a class. He chooses to independently learn by himself. Very interestingly, there are groups in Guatemala and Brazil, high schools, who use Duolingo in order to bridge the language gap between the poor and the rich. So the richest man alive and the poorest kids of Guatemala use the same platform to learn languages independently. This is our way, our perspective on the future-proof education. In 2035, a girl born today will turn 18. 80% 80 of jobs at that time still do not exist today. What is the future we are preparing this girl for? Is our educational system future-proof? Can we really educate our students on something we do not understand ourselves? Well, I think we can. Thank you.